Hello everyone, this is Miss Nook from Vibe Barber College and today I want to talk to you all about chapter 13 in the platinum or the gray looking textbook and in chapter 13 it's talking about um, men's as far as shaving and facial hair designs so with shaving, you want to make sure that you are practicing. You want to make sure that you are knowing of the shave strokes that need to be performed. When I was a student barber many moons ago, what I would do when I would get home from class, from barber class, is that I would sit and I would stretch my skin and I would pretend to razor my face. And that's how I was able to learn my shave strokes. Another thing that I used to do is I would take um, a eyeliner and I would mark my face like uh, one with the arrow, two, uh, backhand with the arrow, three freehand with the arrow, and I will also do that to my children as well. So it helped me, you have to come up with different creative ways to help you to be able to learn your shave strokes, but once you learn them, you got them, okay? Another thing that I used to do when I was a student barber upon coming to coming into being comfortable with using a razor i would then i would get uh, a persona which is the blade and i would shave the back of my own hand so i would say to myself if i can shave the back of my own hand without cutting or nicking myself then i could shave someone else um another key point or key factor with dealing with shaving is that you always want to keep your stretch hand which is the opposite hand of your shave hand dry because you could come into shaving and you could come into stretching the skin and once you come into stretching the skin the hand could slip it could slide even though you keep your hand behind the razor, it could still slide. So be sure to keep your stretch hand dry, okay? Those are just a few FYIs when it comes to um, razor shaving. Another one is this. Um, in the state of Tennessee, we have uh, two razors, but only one razor is actually permissible. And the name of that razor is the changeable blade straight razor because we change the blade out inside of a Sharpies container uh, before we perform the shave on our new clients because each client gets a fresh razor a fresh neck strip, uh, fresh towels. You always, in barbering, we treat our clients the way that we, in return, would like to be treated. So just always remember that and put that first with your sanitation. So let's get into the chapter a little bit. Um, we're gonna start with sanitation and safety precautions. So like I just said, we always wanna disinfect um, before using our razor. Uh, we always wash our hands before servicing the client, right? Uh, we're always gonna use clean linen capes, uh, whatever paper products. Uh, maybe you don't like using a residue towel with your draping, maybe you like to use a paper towel and that's fine that's fine just make sure that it's a fresh one um you always provide cloth or a paper barrier between the client's head and the headrest you don't want your client laying back on a naked headrest you want to protect it with a cloth or some type of a um a paper towel linen or something uh, another thing is that we never proceed with the shave if the client has infections or pustules. Now, that's not saying that you cannot offer anything else to that client. It's just you won't be able to offer them a shave service. But can you offer them a haircut? Yes, absolutely. As long as there's not irritation or pustules or abrasions or infections within the scalp area. And how would we know that? We would do a scalp analysis. And it's the same thing with the face. You do a 
facial analysis uh, when you're going in with a shave client too. Uh, another thing, if a small cut or nick occur, you're going to put on gloves and you're going to follow the blood spill procedure that is in your textbook, okay? You always lock the chair. Once you got the client situated comfortably and it's comfortable for you and the client, you always want to make sure that you lock the chair because you could unmindfully... Um, have another customer come by or a fellow barber come by and they could bump that chair and you got that straight razor on that client, that could be extremely detrimental. So please be sure to lock the chair so that if it's a bump, it's just a bump, the chair won't spin out of control, okay? Um, you always want to prepare facial hair for the shave with warm, hot towels and lather. So, in your hot towel, another name for hot towel is steamer. You always test on your wrist just as you would a baby bottle because if it's too hot for your wrist area, once you stretch that towel out from that roll, then it's definitely uh, too hot for that client's face. And when you have older clients that are getting a razor shave, you also want to be mindful because their skin is thinner and which makes the skin a bit more sensitive. So please be aware of that. When you are lathering, you're going to lather against the grain in upward um, circular motions, okay? This is how we lather. And you don't lather with two hands. You lather, you put the lather here, you scoop, you scoop it out and you're just, you're just lathering. Okay. Upward motion. Another thing about lather is that you always want to make sure that you're lathering just on the areas of the face because that's where your razor will be place so you don't want to put lather here and then you come in with the razor thinking it's the side of the face and it's not that's the whole earlobe right here so you have to make sure that in your lathering that it is neat and precise to the area that you want to target for the facial shave okay with the razor you always want to use the cushions of your fingertips when you are stretching the skin also. You don't want to dig into it with your nails. You don't want to knuckle it. You always want to just use the cushion of your fingertips, all right? Another thing is that um, lather should be applied neatly as i just said you're going to keep the skin moist while you are shaving so rather that's putting a little extra water on your hands or rather it's using a mist bottle with water however do not allow the client's skin to go completely dry in the middle of a shave it's going to be extremely uncomfortable um, for yourself the barber and for the client Another thing is that you're going to use pH balance uh, fresheners or toners or astringents after the shave because you don't want to use like an alcohol when you are shaving a person with a razor shave. You want to more so go with the witch hazel uh, peroxide aftershave tonics, things like that, more so than going straight directly to the alcohol. And they have different choices. Customers enjoy having choices to choose from. Maybe that scent bothers them. Maybe they have a favorite scent that they are looking forward to um, upon leaving your chair. So have a variety of things for your clients, okay? You want to be especially careful when shaving tender, sensitive areas like uh, the lower lip and the lower part of the neck area, okay? Because men have an Adam's apple right here. And so you want to be mindful to move the Adam's apple over and then come in with the shaving. And the same thing with the lip. This is called balling balling like that of the lip so a lot of times you can have them ball their lip and you're able to get that shave area 14 that's right there okay which is the last shave stroke <laughs> you want to also um be especially 
uh, careful when you are also doing that um, the lower lower part of the neck beyond the Adam's apple but right here this area too is very uh, sensitive area that you definitely want to take your time um, on on that area as well okay so we have a few different um shave strokes that we use we use a freehand we use a backhand we use a reverse freehand and then we have reverse backhand some shave strokes you all will use um continuously some shave strokes you will not use as rapidly like the reverse backhand that's not a shave stroke that you it's not like a go-to shave stroke i'm gonna go in with the reverse backhand okay and then like i said you always want to make sure that you follow the shave chart the shave chart uh you won't go wrong Let's move forward um, a little bit more. So, if you are a right-handed barber, okay, so me, I'm, those of you that know me know that I'm even-handed, but for those of you that is just right-handed, so you would be right-handed, your station would be to your right, and the client would be to your right, so you all would be aligned everything to the right, and if you are left-handed, you would begin on the left, the station would be to the left, and the client, everything would be to the left, okay? So whichever hand is your prominent hand, that you, your go-to hand for grabbing the razor would be the side that you will begin your shaving, your shave strokes on, okay? Um, so when you are preparing a client for a shave, you're gonna seat the client comfortably in the chair, you wanna make sure that they are comfortable because you don't want a wiggly moving client when you are in a shave. You want them to be as still as possible, um, almost mannequin-like when they're in that chair once you begin that shave, okay? Um, another thing is that you're going to ask the client to loosen their collar. Maybe you have a, a business mogul in your chair and they have collared shirt on and neck tie or bow tie you can ask them to remove it or you yourself can um, remove it and you want to be paying special careful attention to as far as their suit jacket and things like that make sure that you hang it up don't just lay it or throw it to the side because that person could very well have a meeting after they get their hair cut so you you don't want to ruin um, their image from how they came in. You want to add to it, right? Because in barbering, we accentuate those things that are good with our clients and we minimize those things that are not so good. Um, let's see. Then you're going to make sure that you, you know, you change your headrest cover. You're going to adjust the height of the chair. It is to be up to your heartbeat. I uh, know a lot of barbers like to cut looking down and that's not a good thing to do. That's not a good habit to have. You always want to remain somewhat eye level with your clients. It's less tension across your shoulders as you uh, barber throughout the years for the longevity of, uh, of this career as a profession. You then want to make sure you adjust um, you lock the chair. You're going to place the clean towel on the client's chest. You also just make sure that you get that residue towel on there as well. Then you will prepare your steamers or your hot towel. Let's go down a little bit further. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about um, a couple of terms. So we got once over shave, once over shave. So a once over shave requires less time for a complete shave service. It should result in a smooth face without being a close shave. So another thing with that is that it requires a few more strokes across the grain while completing each shaving movement. And you're going to use a light hand. 
In razor shaving as being a student barber, I want to put lots of emphasis on the fact of that you are to be light-handed. Allow the stretching and the actual razor, that's a brand new razor, right? Each client gets a new razor. Allow it to do the work for you. And then that way you're not adding all that pressure because you don't want to scar uh, that client and then have their face uh, blotted up or tender or sore the next day because you were so heavy handed in your razoring, okay? So another thing that I want to uh, touch bases on with this once over shape when it's saying it's a smooth face without being a close shape is this. When it is a close shape, a close shape is more so shaving against the grain. And another thing with the once over shave is more so with the grain, okay? So please make a note of the difference between the two. So close shaving, the practice of shaving the beard against the grain during the second time over phase of the shave. So here we go again, our fingertips are our very great sensory organs, okay? It can pick up that stubble that your eyes cannot visually see, but it may appear to be a clean shave until you begin to do this with your fingertips over that client's face. And then you begin to realize, I need to go back over this area. And of course you would not do it dry unless they say, hey, I can take a dry shave, but if not, you're going to re-moisten the skin and you'll tackle um, that abrasive area that still has stubble on it, okay? Um, another thing about the close shave is considered to be undesirable because it may irritate the skin. It could lead to ingrown hairs or infection. So a lot of times when you're doing the close shave, don't just go in and do it. Uh, consult with your client about that, all right? Let's move forward a little bit. When you are finished with everything and the shaving and everything service, and when the client has extra hair or residue on them, please be sure to not use the neck duster. It's not prohibited in the state of Tennessee. It's unsanitary. You want to use another fresh linen or fresh towel, paper towel, neck strip to remove all the excess debris or hair that may be left um, on that client, on that particular client. Okay. Um, another thing about with within the facial shaving is that you're going to always pay attention to the client, their face, because if their face is, mm, 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 you know, making uncomfortable movements while you're shaving them, um, it could be that the razor is pulling their skin. It could be that you're not stretching enough so they're able to feel it, or it could be that you are actually, um, heavy-handed uh, beyond it being a dull blade. So please be sure to pay careful attention to the vibes that you are getting off of your particular clients, all right? Uh, so a couple of other common reasons for finding fault with the shave could be, as I just said, the razor could be dull. It could be a dull, rough razor. That's why each client is to get a fresh razor, brand new out the pack. And there's nothing wrong with breaking that seal of that razor open in front of that client. It makes them feel a lot more comfortable. Um, another reason uh, a client may find fault within a shave service is that the hands were unclean. Maybe you're a cigarette smoker and you may think, oh, I just went outside and smoked a cigarette and then you come in on the shave. No, you gotta wash your hands because that client is getting all of that and that's not a good look or name to have as being in this industry as being a professional master barber so you want to make sure that your hands are not unclean uh, another thing that a client may find 
uh, fault within as far as the rays is concerned is that the tiles are uh, dingy or stained or old. Um, the shaving cloth, um, it could be that your fingers are cold, me in particular. Um, a lot of times when you are even just servicing a kid, uh, this is true story when kids get in my chair i have to not just wash my hands but i have to also warm my hands and I have to do this with my hands because a lot of times it's not that they're it's their first haircut or they're scared or anything like that it could be that your fingertips are freezing cold and that will cause a person to dislike you uh true story it was a kid and he came uh, about every two weeks or so and he would tell his mom how much he disliked me. So the mom, she just really liked how I cut his hair. So when they got to the shop, she was trying to bring the conversation up to him to kind of get him to talk about it a little bit. So he showed the mom goes, um, yeah, you didn't want to come see Miss Marze again this week. Um, why is it and he was looking at his mom he was looking at me and i was like why you didn't want to come and see me you know and he goes because your hands are so cold <laughs> talking about my fingertips so be sure to warm your fingers because older people and kids they do not like cold fingertips i've learned that the hard way over the years so i'm giving you all a heads up on it so that you don't have to go through that Okay, um, another reason that clients may find fault in the shave is uh, poorly heated towels. Make sure that the towels are heated thoroughly, not just one end of the towel hot or the middle of it hot, or you, you just want to make sure it is heated thoroughly. Another thing is that the lather may be too cold or the lather could even be too hot. Lather can be too hot coming out those dispensers, absolutely. Um, the glaring, you could have overhead lights that are glaring down on their eyes and that could cause a blinding effect. Um, if you leave unshaven patches of hair on the client's skin, they're definitely going to find fault with that shave. And scraping the skin or too close shaving, as we spoke about earlier in this video. And offensive body odors or a foul breath of a barber so you want to make sure that you take care of that hygiene also um especially when you work so close-knit to your clients um let's see let's go down a little bit further so when you are doing a client's mustache a uh, mustaches are worn for personal adornments per customer just because a person says yeah um cut my hair and then uh do my mustache for me that don't necessarily mean to just do that client's mustache the way that you envision it it have to be what you envision as a barber and what the client is saying to you with you listening to what they are saying and then coming into the middle for an agreement on their mustache area all right so rather that agreement is uh previous pictures that they have themselves of themselves and their phone maybe their driver's license or it could even be pictures that you've did of other clients or it could be pictures that are up on the wall in the um barbershop so be sure to have a clear concise understanding of what it is they want to achieve with their mustache area just as you made sure that you knew what they wanted for their haircut okay keep that same energy when you get to their mustache because in barbering we're not music um we're not magicians okay we can take the hair off but we cannot yet to put the hair back on so once it's done it's done okay i'd rather to say Take a little bit off and kind of try it out versus to just go right in on it that could not be the look that they're trying to uh, obtain 
So be please be mindful of that. The things that you want to take in consideration as a guideline is that large, coarse facial features have a heavier looking mustache. If they have a prominent nose, they're gonna do a medium to large mustache. Long, narrow face, narrow to medium mustache. An extra large mouth will be a pyramid-shaped mustache. Extra small mouth would be medium, short mustache. Okay, so those are the recommendations as a guideline, but still make sure that you consult with each individual client on a one-on-one -on -one basis and if that's your every week client on a every one-on-one -on -one weekly basis okay uh let's go a little bit further so in razor shaving and with beards okay so there's this fad now where they like the big beard but they want it to look chalked okay so Number one, you can chalk it by dry razoring it on that outline, okay? Um, if they cannot take a dry razor, what you can do is you could take the outliner, not the white one, but the one that is the melanated one, the one that's like the gold or the brownish tone, and you can outline their beard with that and then come in with just your outliner and it will appear to have a chalk line. But be sure to do it here and here. Don't just do it here. And another thing is this that I've learned um, over the years of barbering. When I am doing a client's face, I do not lay them back when I am doing this part. This part I do with them sitting up because here's the funny thing about skin. Skin is our largest organ, true, but skin also is sags and it moves. So if you got them back, this side could be sagging lower than this side. And so when you set them up, you got one side coming in this and then you got one side coming like that. So you want to make sure that they are in sequence with one another. So how you do that is with them sitting up and with you looking on them and tackling it um, head on, okay? So please just be mindful and keep that little pointer with you, okay? So beards and goatees can balance the facial features and correlate proportions of the head, face, and the body. Barbara's personal preference rather to perform haircut or beard trim first is up to you as the barber, whether you want to do the haircut or whether you want to do the beard or the razor shave first, okay? Um, just take into consideration how many clients you got waiting, take into consideration the time frame as far as the one in the chair, um, you know, what they have to work with. So take those things into consideration uh, before choosing which one you would like to perform first, okay? Let's move down just a little bit um, further and then you go into your review questions for chapter uh, 13. Please be sure to do the review questions. Please be sure to look over the terminology. It will help you all. And flip your razor. Take your razor out. Play with the razor. Like I said at the beginning of the video, get balloons, the back of your hand, do your stretch procedures in the mirror on your own face. Get a outliner and mark the face up with numbers so that you know which shave stroke is which or which goes where. This is Ms. Nuke with Vibe Barber College. This is chapter 13.